Hello everyone and welcome to the Fans POV at Anime USA 2014. I am Chrissy Lawler and with us is the wonderful, fabulous, and always, always personable Michelle Knott. Wow! That's, that's a nice compliment. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think of nice things. Nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you. Thank and you. Thank you because sh- I, I know I've seen voice actors. They run all over the place yes. at cons. <laughs> so I'm sure. Wait, like where am I going next? That's why I'm, I'm glad we have liaisons or handlers or whatever you like to call them because they're like, like they know where we're going and I'm like, I have no idea where I'm going. I <laughs> like the term handlers. It makes it sound like it's like you're trying to corral them into here, this way, this way, in this right, direction. Yeah. What's great about Anime USA is they actually have like security people too. They're like, hi Michelle, I'm your security person. I'm like, whoa, what? <laughs> I'll go to some cons, like they won't have anybody for me. Like I, you have to figure out where you're going by yourself. And I'm like, what? I've never been here before. Are you crazy? So that's what's cool about Anime USA. I love Anime USA art. <laughs> yes, we love, we love Anime USA. It's so much fun. All right, so we're going to do the, the, the normal icebreaker question. How did you get into voice acting? How did I get into voice? Well, I went on American Idol, and I won. No, I actually did win a contest. That was funny. Um, well, I mean, I was, I was a... Jeez, oh, where should I start? I was a theater major in college. But then I transferred schools, and I studied radio and television broadcasting for a little bit. I worked at a couple... A local CBS and NBC affiliate in Pennsylvania. I moved back to Joyzy. I live in Joyzy. Um, I worked at MSNBC for a little bit, and I hated news. I hated. I, I couldn't stand it. It was too depressing. It was like this fire happened today, and more people died, and more people died, and this dog got killed. And I'm like, oh my god, I hate this job. So that was kind of like my transition into voice acting. Since I started out as a theater major anyway, I was like, well, that's kind of what I want to do with my life. So it was so funny in 2003 at the Big Apple Anime Fest in New York, they, where was that? I think that was at the Marriott, if anybody remembers that. They had this anime idol contest and win a role in an anime. You know, that's like a, a lot of people and companies like to do that. So I'm like, sure, why not? So uh, I won my first role was Hajime Yagi in the world of Norway. It was this little like 12, you know, short um, little series, you know, just, just one little season. And I was like, I want to do this for a living. How do I do this? So I talked to my director and I talked to all the other like voice actors and actresses and stuff and like, help me, I want to do this. You know? Cause like w- when I used to go to conventions like in college and stuff like that, when, um, cause I- I'm also a fan. I don't just live anime. I'm also a fan. <laughs> um, I would always go to like the voice actor panels and things like that. I love to hear their stories. Um, so yeah, that was kind of basic, like my transition. It's like, oh, you need to make a demo. You need to mail your demo out. You need, and I'm like, all right, we're, let's do this. Let's do this. Okay, got a vo- vocal coach. Let's do this. And that's how it kind of happened from there. And then like the big thing obviously was, what year was that? 2006, like when they were like recasting Pokemon and I auditioned for that and I was like, yes, please. And <laughs> um, they're like, well, you sound exactly like Rachel as Jesse. So like, that's how I kind of got the role as Jesse because they were looking for voice matching people. Okay. Um, which is <laughs> uh, like a lot of people, uh, well, a lot of people do that, you know, with, especially with video games. I mean, they can't get, you know, you and McGregor to play Obi-Wan Kenobi for all the video games. Plus they'd have to shell out like billions of dollars for that. So they're like, oh, okay, we're going to get, you know, James Arnold Taylor to play, you know, Obi-Wan Kenobi. So, um, yeah, so yeah, they had the recasting. I'm, I've been Jesse for nine years now. Yeah. We're going on like, well, now it'll be ten. We're going on season eighteen. Oh, so <laughs> no, and I feel old. I feel old. Uh, no, 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 I was gonna say 2003. I graduated high school, so I'm like, oh. <laughs> so I'm like, oh no, we've been in it this long. <laughs> I know, right? it's so funny kid. people come up to the the table like autographs and stuff and i'm like you f-, they're like oh i feel so old i'm like you feel old what about me <laughs> i know i know we have a few of our friends that are their children like oh i feel so old and we're like be quiet <laughs> be quiet <laughs> well you were saying how much you love anime usa and i know that you are you you've been to so many conventions you're no stranger to the convention circuit is there something a particular part of the conventions that you that is your most favorite besides the fans because we know the oh, fans yeah. are always the, I, big, the highlight of it i i love them um 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 the staff 
I love the staff. No, the staff is, if you have like a really good staff, that this con seems to run really smoothly. You know, I've been to some conventions. You're waiting like hours for this to start out. And the lines are like, and these poor kids are like standing there for like hours. And I feel so bad. You know, if you have like a really good tight staff and that knows what they're doing and they're not just like, Mwah! or that actually care, you know what I mean? And they're not like, oh, well, I'm going to go see the masquerade. It's like, no, 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 we need you to do this. What are you doing? If you have, I think if you have like a really good staff at a con, it'll run like really, this one runs like really smoothly. Everything so far that I've seen is like been on time. Like nothing has been like, like too crazy, like out of, you know, way out of the ordinary. Um, I love, like, the guest relations staff for Anime USA is really good. Like, I've been to some, like, really, really good conventions with a good guest relations staff, and then I've been to some cons that I, I told them, please do not ask me back. Like, I will not come back to your convention. I've actually said that to the con chair of conventions before. I send, not in front of anybody, I would just send an email, you know, like, thank you very much for having me at your convention, but, but you know, please do not ask me back. I will not be returning, you know, for previous you know future years uh, like just like, exactly <laughs> well it's, it's just a staff like, makes a con right exactly and these people do it for free that's the thing i mean most of them i think like i think anime expo they actually pay them and Otacon. i think like those two are the big ones where they actually get paid to do that and, and then you got a lot like of the volunteers job. and then you have tons of volunteers yeah and then you have yeah a lot of people just do this for free like volunteers and i think that's amazing and it's like you know so I'm, I'm always like, nice. I'm not I'm not the kind of person that's like, I just want green M&Ms in the green room. You know? I'm not that kind of person. I'm just like, yeah, whatever you want. I like, I'll ask them, I'll be like, you want to go to the dealer's room, hang out? You want to buy something, whatever? I'm, I'm, I try to be like really cool because I know they're like really stressed and they got, and sometimes they'll get guests. They're like, oh, I just want green M&Ms, you know, and I don't want to be that kind of person, you know, <laughs> so, <laughs> but yeah, definitely like if you have a really, really good staff that that's what I love about cons it, that things run really smoothly and you know, everything's on time and you know, not like, and these poor kids are waiting like hours and hours. <laughs> so that's, that's what I love about it. I love the fans. I love the love staffs at cons. AOC, hey, you're good. You're good. You're good. Okay. You're good. Like All right. Speaking <laughs> of fans, we've, sometimes this can be a little of a, an interesting question. <laughs> What, do you have any crazy fan stories? Oh, jeez. <laughs> Who doesn't? Who doesn't have crazy fan stories? Um, uh, I don't, I'm trying to like think of one at the top of my head. I mean, I know like some people have... I, I don't know. I have some crazy good con stories. Like, people give me gifts and stuff like that, which is really nice. I'm trying to think... Some, I mean, everybody has, like, you know, crazy stalker people sometimes, you know, and, uh, or people that, like, won't leave the table, and they're talking, talking, and there's, like, a huge line, and you're trying to say, okay, okay, move on, okay. Um, oh, jeez, I'm trying to think of one uh, that comes to mind. Wait, get, I, I'll, I'll think of one. I'm trying to think of no one. problem. No, it's no problem. No problem. I know. It's, it, it's a lot of, it's on the, on really <laughs> stressful questions. Don't, I don't want to, I don't want to be too much on you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyway, uh, maybe then we'll. T I know everybody does a lot of roles, and then there's those roles you try for and you don't always get. Is there a role out there, the, your dream role, that, that you're like, I wish I had gotten it, or maybe if they redo it, I would try for it? Uh, well, I've, I've, yeah, talked about this in panels before. It, like, my dream roles that I would love, because I'm a huge fan of Ghost in the Shell, and I really, really love, I mean, oh my God, I love Mary Elizabeth McGlynn. Her voice is like butter, you know? It's just, it's so deep, and it's like, oh. And it's a character that's not these, like, ah! You know, it's not the typical anime lolly girl, you know what I mean? Which you hear so much of. And it's really difficult because in Japan, I don't know if it's their vocal cords are really tight or something like that. They can get really high. And a lot of most, uh, you know, American women, they have deeper voices. A lot of, you know, at least women that I run into, they don't have like those super, super high voices. So that's always kind of hard. And we try to match them and things like that. And then the fans are like, oh, you sound terrible. And it's like, well, we don't have that kind of really, really high natural sound. So I love Motoko Kusanagi's character because, like, obviously she's like an adult. She's not like the tiny, lolly, cute little anime girl. I mean, I love them too. Like, they're cute. But, like, I, I love her because she's a really strong character, and I love the story, and I, I, I mean, I love Mary Elizabeth's m voice. Oh, my God. It's it's just so, like, deep and lush and everything, and I'm like, ah. so, <laughs> so So I, I would... I would have loved, I, I don't have a, as deep a voice as she does, but like, I would have loved to be able to play that role. But I mean, that was done like before my time. So, <laughs> so um, 
what's it? I, I love um, Cowboy Bebop. I love Faye Valentine because she's like, she could be kind of ditzy, but she's like really sexy at the same time too. So I, I love her character. She would have been fun. And of course, Wendy Lee is amazing as her. I, I love her. Um, those are, I'm trying to think of if there was something that I did. Because it's like you do so many things and you forget them over time because that's what you have to do Like you go into an audition and you do the audition You just have to forget about it because like you'll drive yourself crazy Like with every audition that you do because you do like hundreds of auditions like within a couple weeks And you're constantly going in and it's like okay I didn't get it okay And you just have to move on to the next one because you'll want to shoot yourself It was like I just did all these and I didn't get like five six roles and you're like So you just have to kind of go in forget about it go to the next audition that's what and if something comes up great awesome and then you you know you give 200 percent into that role and you know that's what, but i mean I, I i do like anime i'm i'm a fan i must say but so those are like my my two favorite shows that i've seen um it's ghost in the shell and cowboy bebop i really love i mean i love pokemon i love everything that i've done um genshikin was really cool that was a great show it's an anime about anime fans yeah, my one friend loves that show. so that, i love that and i was ogiwe chica in that which was cool uh they're all college students and it's great they're trying to like find themselves you know and boyfriends and girlfriends and relationships and whatnot okay. And conventions and all that, because it's like, oh, it's like nerd love. No, <laughs> so I I love that show, but it's like, uh, as far as like like mainstream anime, I, was, I like those are my two top favorite. I love the Ghost in the Shell series, um, and I, I like the movies and the standalone complex. I I love that series is great, and I love Cowboy Bebop. So I, I was like, oh, Steve Bloom, and he's here this weekend. So I'm like, Steve Bloom, I love your Cowboy Bebop. But then we started talking about box trolls, and I'm like, oh my god, you're in box trolls. That's so awesome. I haven't seen it yet, but I'm like, oh, I totally have to see that. So because it looks really cute, I love stop motion animation. I love like Nightmare Before Christmas is really cool. <laughs> <There's>, <laughs> I love Tim Burton. He's so amazing. <laughs> if I could like go to California, because I'm on the East Coast, if I could go to Cal, I mean, I went to California to do a couple video games, but oh, if I could ever like get in something big like that, would be amazing. That would be awesome. So we gotta we gotta try and get those notes in. Like, okay, Michelle Knotts <laughs> is here. Just give her a call. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right. Steve. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, since a large percentage of what you you're I think known for is Pokemon. Pokemon yes. um, <laughs> the game just came out. Yes, I saw it. Super I, Smash Brothers. Brothers right? yeah, I'm I, like, finally, I can post this on Facebook because they're like, why can you post this on Facebook? I'm like, okay. It's like, yes, I'm Snivy in the game. I'm Gardevoir and Latios and Latios. And I saw a lot of those yesterday done the autograph signing. My name in the credits. And they're like, wait, you haven't announced it. I'm like, I'm at a con. I'm sorry. I'm very busy. So I'm like, all right, fine. So I think it was like last night or something. I'm like, all right, let me just post this on Facebook so I can get it over with. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you have a favorite Pokemon? Not necessarily has to be one you you yourself voiced, but in general. I well, it was funny. Like long when it first came out, a long time ago. Like my favorite one was Poliwhirl. I don't know why. I I think because he was just because he's like Polly, you know. And I I love like the certain because it's just like psychedelic looking, you know. And I mean, some people. I think I thought he looked a little purplish to me. Some people say he's blue or black, but I'm like, I thought he looked a little purple. I can't really tell. But Could be depending on who, who just decided to color that day. Yeah. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Maybe it'll be this color. But so starting out, he was my favorite. I, I don't know why. I just like, oh, he's cute. Uh, um, but I mean now, well, the ones that I love that I voice, I love Piplup and I love Manaphy. So I say Piplup was cool because I was able to like give him kind of a voice first, nothing that I had to match because they were new. So it's like, because they're like, oh, okay, well, you're going to do Squirtle, you're going to do Bulbasaur, and you're going to do like basically the voices that Rachel did. You're going to be Jigglypuff, you're going to do, can you do this? And it's like, okay, good. So we try to do that. And I'm like, okay, great. You can sound just like that. So you do that. But when they finally got like the new starters coming up and we kind of with the starters they actually do like to audition for that they're like what can you come up with the, um i mean piplup sounded a little bit different than the japanese but they liked it which was great so so i got to be piplup and who is that piplup turtwig and chimchar were the starters for that so i was like oh finally i get to give a voice to a pokemon that hasn't been done already which was great so I'll now if they ever do it they gotta match you now <laughs> <laughs> now if the next people take over the next wave of voice actors, you have to match me now so <laughs> i mean i got to do that with snivy which was cool 
too but like since Piblip will be my favorite favorite because I got to start out doing that and I didn't have to try and voice match anybody which is cool I'm like yes my own <laughs> finally <laughs> but they're always coming up with new with new ones oh, I'm yeah. in the new section I'm Furfru in the new finally my first puppy dog so that's cute Furfru is like little puppy dog really cute <laughs> um, do you happen to have with all the Pokemon do you happen to have your own dream team that you would have take to the finals um, wow I don't know <laughs> it's so funny because like when you go to cons they're like oh what games do you have and I'm like oh my god I, it's like well I have a mortgage so um, bills kind of go first before games because the last one I got was Pearl and it's like that's what they're like what because it's so funny because like some of the even like you know the older older you know, teens and everything that are, you know, still living at home or they're in college or whatever. I'm like, yeah, well, I own a home and I have to pay bills first, <laughs> you know. I wish I could buy all the games there. But, um, because I think there was X and Y and black and white, you know, and now they're, oh my God, what are they on I've now? lost track. I, I keep losing track of them. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's like Smash Brothers all and all this. But it's like, so I, I try to make a joke. I'm just like, well, I have a mortgage and, you know, and, and they laugh about that. And I'm like, oh, okay, they're good. That's funny. Because I don't like paying my mortgage, but <laughs> I'm like, I do think it's funny. But <laughs> um, dream team. Jeez, I don't know. Um, 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 um. Because I'm trying to think of like, who would be the most powerful? Like Mew, like everybody wants Mew or Mewtwo because they're like super powerful. Um, well, if it helps, usually I just pick with all the water Pokemon. <laughs> Got it, right. <laughs> are, you, are, you, are you a Scorpio? No, or I'm not. Are you, are you a water I, sign? I just like Eevees. Oh, so yeah. I, I always do <gasps> Vaporeon. Did you see? I don't know. I don't, I don't like to drink or anything like that. But somebody was passing around this the picture of the drinks, the different Eevee evolutions. Oh. Like the alcoholic drinks on Facebook and stuff. I was like, that's a really good idea. <laughs> it's amazing. Yep. Now, yeah, so usually when I play, it's I just do an all water type because I love, I always do Vaporeon. I, I know, it's like I have Pibla, Manaphy, and Milotic or something. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter who's the starters. I'm like, Vaporeon and water. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I don't care if I always lose. I do like the EVs. They're very cute. And I like that the, the different evolutions. But like the drink, the drinks that I saw were really cool. I'm like, oh, I got to try that someday. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, the next question I was going to ask is, do you play any you of the games? No. <laughs> well, let's go. Afterwards, we'll go hang out. We got it. bar over there. Yeah. No, I was going to ask was if you did play any of the of the Pokemon games. Oh, okay. Yeah. The last one I have is, is Pearl. Um, I, I have one of the Pokemon Ranger games is is pretty good, and the one of the Mystery Dungeon games is pretty cute. Um, generally, I, like if I'm on a long plane trip, if I'm going to California or something, like on a plane is good, nice and easy. I could play a game. Um, generally, though, it's it's so hard to find time because it's like you know, like I own a condo, so it's just like pay bills and work and cleaning and this and that. You know, it's it's so life gets in the way. You know, yeah. I I try to find time to have fun. I really do. That reality <laughs> thing gets in the way of fun. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well. Unfortunately, I think that's all the questions. Oh, yes, the crazy fan story. That's okay. I'm um, sure lots of I mean, I'll get like, uh, well, everybody gets this too. Some people get mean people too on like Facebook, like you <laughs> or something like, ooh, sorry, should I not say that? <laughs> You're horrible. Cut, edit that out. And like, some people go on Facebook and say, blah, blah. yes. <laughs> <laughs> that you're horrible or, or something like that and then those you just have to block and delete and th you just got to brush those things off in this industry you kind of have to have like a thick skin especially with anime i think a lot of the anime fans and they're they're really like dedicated and put their heart and soul into like the series and collecting and everything which is great but they're also like really harsh critics which which i can understand um but uh yeah that you just have to have like a really thick skin in any kind of like music you know art acting anything you kind of have a have like a little thicker skin on it and kind of brush it away because it's like you know what well the director picked me for the role so there's got to be a reason why <laughs> and other people liked me uh, no offense <laughs> but uh, you know everybody runs into those issues you know now and again i can't think of a good story because like greg Garris has a great story like somebody gave him like oh like a thing of brownies but didn't tell him it was laced with something i'm like oh <gasps> Oh my god! And I'm like, you're kidding me! And then Chris Kaysen has the great story about the girl with the Hello Kitty underwear yes. or something. She's like, look, Chris! Like, oh. like she literally lifted up her skirt to show her him this Hello Kitty underwear. I'm like, wow! <laughs> I've heard some like watching through YouTube and watching uh, panel uh, um, voice actors Q and A panels and some of those stories, and you're like, 
Wow. Yeah, right. Oh, boy. <laughs> People get a little too, too anxious. <laughs> yes. So, all right. Well, the last question I have for you is not really more of a question, but a request. Okay. A lot of, well, sometimes we'll go out and ask fans questions to ask the guests or any uh, voice okay. actors. We would like you to ask the fans a question. Ask the fans the a question. The question, what, what it is, is what's your favorite that? Pokemon? No. I <laughs> <laughs> what it'll be is, is you'll ask a question. We'll ask you guys to leave message comments below and we'll try to get them linked to you so you can That's get great from them. That's really cool. Um, Oh jeez, what? I was, there's so many things I could ask. <laughs> First thing that pops on your head. First thing. First thing I think of is is cons. I guess like what what's your favorite con or what like what do you like most about a con? Do you like do you, what do you like the most about a convention? There we go. Do you like seeing the voice actors? Do you like seeing the masquerade? Do you like do you just come here and cosplay? I see people. You know, in the hall, like, I'm just going to stand here in the lobby for five hours and peop people are going to take pictures of my costume. Like, the one guy with the big robot, like, he can't even move. So I'm like, yeah. you're just going to stand here in the lobby all day, aren't you? You know? <laughs> I've seen some of them where they literally stand in a corner for the entire weekend. It's like they can't move. And plus, they can't move because people constantly want to take pictures of them. They're just like, wait, wait, can I get a pic? Wait, 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 wait. So it's I like, got to go eat. You might as well just stand there. You're never going to use the restroom ever. Like, <laughs> at all. I have, I've had experience with that with friends. <laughs> yes. <laughs> How do you take those things off? I don't. I don't know. I don't even know. Uh, All right. Well. So there you go. There you go, guys. Let what cons do you like? What's your favorite thing about a con? Anything con related? Because <laughs> I love cons. <laughs> there you have it, then, everyone. This is Michelle Nuts. Thank you so Thanks much for, for the interview. Me. It's nice it was lovely. You. And we will get you guys later. <laughs>